Okay. So we've come up into the um, onto the top deck yeah. for a quick lunch before we go off out. Yeah. And uh, I've had my second hot dog. Yes. And you've had. I had my first hot dog with fries. Lovely, very nice indeed. Oh, and uh, I was going to order a drink, and I went for a small Peroni, but they don't serve it here. So the waitress offered me Stella. Um, and that's fine. And then she says, uh, would I like to? Because they would buy one, get one free. So we both had one. Cheers. Cheers. Hello, and welcome to part four of this, our 16-night Baltic cruise on p beautiful ship, Aurora. In this episode, we explore the Royal Palace in Stockholm, enjoy a champagne sail away, have dinner in the glass house and visit the unknown to us but beautiful town of Visby in Sweden. So Lindsay, you're just about to do the coffee trial taste mm. and go for it. Take my life into my hands. And how is it? Can't be that bad. <laughs> you know, it's got its usual standard. Yeah. No, it doesn't reach that far. <laughs> oh Lord! And yet, it's been quite good in the dining rooms that's, so that's, far. Yeah, that's. Oh good. bless! Oh well, not to worry. Maybe uh, I'll give mine a miss then. <laughs> Soon after the coffee tasting, it was time to set off on our tour to the Royal Palace of Stockholm, and this is what we found outside. Lindsay loves visiting her palaces, and to be fair, when the architecture is this interesting, I quite enjoy them as well. The Kunglida Slot, apologies for my pronunciation, is one of Europe's largest and most dynamic palaces. The Royal Palace of Stockholm is His Majesty's the King's official residence, and is also the setting for most of the monarchy's official receptions, and is open to the public all year round, and we were lucky enough to visit it on this particular day. The palace is built in a Baroque style by architect Nicodemus Tessin and is formed as a Roman palace. The palace has more than 600 rooms divided between 11 floors. The Royal Apartments of the Palace are a collective name for the magnificent state rooms that are used at the King and Queen's receptions. There's also a banquet hall used at gala dinners, cabinet meetings and parliamentary evenings. The well-preserved interior provides historical insights for the 1700s and onwards, where each individual monarch has left traces of his own time. The next room we entered was the council chamber, but it's also used as a private dining room by King Gustav III. We heard all the ins and outs of the complicated relationships of both the royal families throughout Scandinavia and all the joinings and separations of different countries, mainly due to marriages. So this is the banqueting hall and the guy was saying that it's decorated in the colours of the foreign dignitaries that arrive here to see. The Bernadotte apartments are situated in the north wing of the palace and consist of 14 rooms. While here, we learnt about the palace's earliest history up until the time when Bernadotte apartments were completed and became home to King Adolf Frederick and Queen Lovisa. One of the rooms in this area was the Pillared Hall, which was in the northwest of the apartments. It was originally Adolf Frederick's dining room, and today the room mainly reflects the 1780s when it was modernised by King Gustav III. One of the most highly decorated rooms in the palace was the Victoria Salon, which demonstrates the splendour of the 1800s. Both the chandelier and the carpet are impressive in both size and beauty. And this room really is a fine example of early Victorian Scandinavian style.
The Bernadotte Gallery contains pictures of almost all the older members of the royal family. The room provides the perfect opportunity to relate the story of Carl Johan XIV and the very unsettled period of history in the early 1800s. If you're enjoying this video and would like to see more, please hit that like button. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It costs you nothing, but really helps us. Thank you. Now into the Museum of the Royal Coaches. It's a little bit dark in here, but I hope you can see what's going on. This Royal Coach was used between 16 and 1700. So this one here is the gilded coronation coach built in 1720. So these coaches were pulled by six horses in train together. So this coach is known as the Berlin and was built in Germany. And the date of this particular coach is around 1780. This is one of the royal gowns. Um, I think it was sort of fit Lindsay um, and tiny little feet. And I think they would fit Lindsay beautifully, those shoes. But she might struggle a little with the dress. Might be a little tighter with the hips. So we're just setting sail now from Stockholm, aren't we? We are, yeah. yeah? And it's a nice sunny day, yeah. and nice and warm. Well, it is the at sun. the moment. In the sun, and this particular second. Um, yeah. What did you decide to do? Well, we decided to have um, a bit of a, a champagne sailor. Oh, wow. Well. So, cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's quite a nice one. That is nice. Mm. So, what have you got now, Lynn? Um, well, I've decided to stick to the bubbles. I've got Prosecco. Yes. Oh, Prosecco. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've got Prosecco. For dinner that evening, we decided to visit the glass house. And here's a look at the menu so you can see what you'd have chosen. We have eaten in the glass house before, and on Britannia, we found the food absolutely wonderful. Not so much to our liking on Iona. So let's find out what Aurora's like. So, Lindsay, we're in the lovely glass house yes. on Aurora. Yep. Bit of a change tonight. And uh, what have we ordered so far? Um, well, I'm having a trio of starters. Yes. Which is Thai beef salad and lamb skewers and a chicken. Popcorn chicken? Popcorn chicken. Popcorn. Popcorn. How much have you had to drink? Only two. Two what? Bowls? <laughs> no. <laughs> Working on that. Um, and what are we drinking? And we're having um, a glass of Prosecco. A glass? Yeah, yeah, well the rest of it's in the bottle. Oh, a bottle of Prosecco, yeah. right. And then I'm going to have um, these sliders. Sliders? And I ordered three starters. So I've ordered the Thai beef salad, I've ordered the lamb skewers, and I've ordered... Um, Oh, what is it? Um, oh, uh, tempura prawns, because they're quite nice as well. And then for the main course, I am having an eight ounce ribeye, surf and turf, and I'm looking forward to it. And I might I might have a glass of Prosecco if Lindsay allows me. Well, there's only one bottle. We can always get another one. Oh, well, we could, yes. Yeah. We're just missing the, the red wine flights and our friends that were with us here last time. Yeah, but hey ho. March. March. Richard in Canada. Yeah. Next March. Next March. Here we come. Yeah. <laughs> Just practicing. Yeah. So, this yeah. is my, uh, my dinner. I've got my lamb skewers here. I've got my uh, tempura prawns here. And that's my beef salad. I have beef, popcorn chicken, lamb skewers. Enjoy. So, Lindsay, we've had our first three small plates. And what's your verdict? Very good. Enjoyed that. Yeah. All done? Yeah, thank yes, you. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Plates were empty. Yes, as are mine, all empty. 
It was all delicious. I don't think the lamb was as fully flavoured as the last time we had it on Britannia. But I must admit I enjoyed the chicken more than I thought I was going to. Yeah? Hmm. Hmm. Good. And the beef for me was still the star of the show. Yeah. Quite yeah. spicy and tasty, but the star of the show definitely for me. So these are Lindsay's sliders and that's fries. What's left of them? What's left of them? And I have my steak, but I just unfortunately have to send it back because it's a little on the tough side actually. Shame. Um, perfectly cooked, but not good to eat. So you, you've had a bit of a problem with your first steak. Yeah, yeah. And my rib I wasn't particularly good. It's really tough actually. So I sent it back. Um, and they replaced it and they brought back some prawns that were absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this steak's absolutely fine, so I can only say good service, fix the problem, sort it out, and I'm really enjoying the meal. So don't be frightened to. Well, if there's a problem, there's a problem. To tell them if there's a problem, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Janet, <laughs> how are you feeling this evening? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> I'm fine, I've got no voice. You've got no voice? Now where have you left it? In Stockholm. In Stockholm? Oh, I'd say. Oh, very good. <laughs> it's a shame, isn't it? It's a shame. And what are you doing tonight then? What are you doing? I'm giving him a peaceful life. Giving him a peaceful night. A peaceful night. Oh, I see. Us and our matching shirts. <laughs> see Antonio here. See, I just turn around. See, and there you go. See, yeah. See, all matching. This is wrong. Except for one of you who have gone with a seraphim, and I can confirm the correct answer is seraphim. So well done to table twenty. You're the only ones who got that one. That's in a carol, isn't it? The seraphims and children. Yeah, seraphim. Okay. Yeah. Question number fourteen. He's a vicar. Bouncing Back was the autobiography of... Hello and welcome to Visby in Sweden. Yes. Yes. So we arrived here and it's a really beautiful little place. Um, and the flowers in this garden are quite stunning. So we just thought we'd take you for a little walk with us <laughs> as we go down the, uh, the path here. It's really nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. See where it takes us. Yeah. Bisbee is a well-preserved medieval Hanseatic town that dates back to the 12th century. It has a well-preserved 3.5 km long medieval ring wall with many of its original towers from the 1200s still intact. The wall encircles the centre of Visby and was originally built for protection against both foreign enemies and Swedish assailants from the countryside. Along the streets of the towns are more than 200 buildings and homes dating back to somewhere between the 12th and 14th centuries. Every summer, Visby celebrates Medieval Week with its lively market including music and theatre. All in all, there are some 500 events. In the biggest medieval festival in Northern Europe, and a lively event where people dress up in costumes and recreate life in the medieval days. It's a lively experience for visitors of all ages. Unfortunately, it wasn't taking place at our time of visit. In addition to its long history and fascinating ruins, Visby is also known for its gardens, as you've already seen, and particularly the profusion of roses that bloom in the sunny summer months. With its natural beauty, ancient history, Gotland is a mystical, inspiring place to live that attracts many artists. Their handicrafts are sold by local Visby shops. Gotland is particularly known for its wonderful ceramics and woolen items. The grey wool lambskins from local sheep warm and decorate many Scandinavian homes.
Drotton Church was built in the 13th century and dedicated to the Holy Trinity. It's commonly known as Drotton, an Old Norse word for ruler and god. St Lawrence's Church has a different shape from the other churches of Visby. Whereas they were inspired by German ecclesiastical architecture, St Lawrence's resembles the Byzantine churches of the East. The church is dedicated to St Lawrence, who was martyred in the 3rd century by being roasted on a grid. The church was built in the 13th century and for all its exotic design, it was the work of the island's own craftsmen, as witness the distressing of the stone in the masonry technique. The numerous staircases and passages in the walls are distinctive features. The passages leads from one level to another, almost the whole way round the building. St Lawrence's Church was finally abandoned in the 16th century at the time of the Reformation. Visby St Mary's Cathedral was originally built in the 13th century and originally was constructed from wood. It was built as the church for the German traders in the city who were part of the Hanseatic lead. The wooden church unfortunately suffered damage from a fire and was largely rebuilt in 1361 when the island of Gotland became part of Denmark following the Reformation and in 1572 it was raised to the status of cathedral. Since 1645, Gotland and the cathedral have been part of Sweden. So Linz, we've stopped here at the Piazza Cafe restaurant mm. in Visby for a cup of coffee and what's the verdict? Strong. Strong, very strong. Strong. It was all right. Yeah, yeah it was all right. Interesting, it, interesting glass of milk. Yeah. Which says Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey. whiskey. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I think we'd probably rather have the original contents. <laughs> but what a beautiful little place. It is, yeah. Um, it's lovely. Really, really nice place to walk around and just relax and enjoy. I think it's a stunning place. Yeah. Beautiful. We've been strolling around Visby. Yeah. It's a beautiful little place. It's really warm now, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's quite pleasant. I mean, it, sat yeah. here in... I need a coat on, but I could have done with a lighter oh, jacket, really. I'm just in my fleece, and I'm completely warm enough, and the, the sun's out, and we're sat here by the sea, just looking out, enjoying. Managed to find the shops. Yeah. Get a new micro SD. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we managed to get back to where we started. Yeah, which is a, a good thing for us. Yeah. And I'll just turn you, oops, I'll just turn you around now. And there's the sea, there's the view in front of us. It's not a particularly um, exciting coastline, is it? No, not really. But no. then it's probably reclaimed this bit anyway. Yeah, it might well be. We've had our starter, which we forgot to film. So now we've got this vegetable soup en pisto. Mm. Let's see what that's like and see how it's going. The main course has arrived. This is my lamb shank with cabbage, mashed potato, carrot and lentils. But I don't seem to have it. <coughs> Excuse me, any mash or cabbage. But we have got roast potato and broccoli instead. And what have you got, darling? Arctic char. Arctic char? Mm. With new potatoes? Potatoes, I wouldn't say they were new, but potatoes and... <laughs> um, um, Celery? No, it's cucumber heart. Cucumber heart? Yeah, not keen on that. And, and broad, broad beans, beans and, peas. and peas. So, I've got my cheese and biscuits with extra biscuits. Lindsay has got her lemon cello panna cotta. And Dave has got a cherry cheesecake or oh, yeah. a cheesecake with cherries. Yeah. And every, everyone's got extra ice cream apart from me. But I'm sure if I asked for it, I could have some. <laughs> and that ended our wonderful day in Visby. If you've enjoyed this and would like to see more of our adventures, why not try one of the choices above now?